Hello, I'm Denise Schwab, Extension Beef Specialist for Northeast Iowa, and I'm here to visit with you about the, the last segment of the Iowa Cow-Calf um, Production System Project, which is looking at three different cow systems. So our traditional system where we have um, cows that are grazed roughly half the year and fed stored feed roughly half the year, our extended grazing systems where they're grazing at least three-fourths of the year or more, and then our limited grazing systems where they're grazing very little, um, basically a month or two. This project, again, is funded by the Leopold Center for Sustainable Agriculture and the Iowa Nutrient Research Center. So our best management practices are really looking at how to best utilize and balance our resources of land, labor, and animals to be the most profitable and productive program you can put together. Um, when we looked at best management practices, there's a few basics that stand that are consistent for all cow systems, all cow herds, regardless of system. Number one, obviously, is to control feed costs. So looking at what we can do to reduce the amount of feed waste. How do we best utilize low cost or least cost feedstuffs? Making sure we're testing feedstuffs to know the nutrient content and balancing rations that meet the cow's needs at each stage of production. Um, looking to extend whatever grazing season we have available to us. So even for our limited grazers, looking at how do we utilize our corn stock residue um, to be able to extend that grazing season, even if it's only a month. Utilizing crop residue when a, whenever it's a possibility. And then also like have you consider using rumensin to help improve feed utilization and feed efficiency. And then finally, also related to feed cost is to monitor body condition score of the cows so that we're providing nutrients to meet her needs. Beyond feed then, we're looking at for all herds, we need to optimize conception and weaning rates. We need to be doing pregnancy checks and using that as a tool for our culling practices. And um, we want to look at how do we add value to the calves by genetic selection, selecting those sires that are going to give us the best product for the market we're, we're targeting. Looking at utilizing reproductive technologies if they can work in our operation and then marketing those calves to add value to them. We also need to manage our non-feed operating costs. Although they are much smaller than feed costs, we still need to pay attention and manage those. Um, we want to sit down and review our health protocol with our veterinarian at least annually, looking at what are the diseases and parasites that our cattle are exposed to and are the, at most risk of and try to manage those appropriately. We want to be marketing our cows an acceptable body condition score and at seasonal highs. Market cows and bulls make up about 15 to 25 percent of our income, so we want to try to take advantage of that. We also think about um, can we capitalize on some economies of scale or diversification in our operations. Um, looking to control our fixed asset costs. They're our second largest cost beyond feed. So looking at how do we control those. And then finally, keeping a good set of enterprise records so you can compare yourself to other benchmark data. As we look at the different systems then, some of the best practices for our limit grazing systems, again, controlling feed costs. But here we're thinking about um, using a TMR in a bunk and what do we need to do to reduce feed waste out of that bunk. Um, we have the ability to adjust rations regularly to better meet the nutrient requirements of those cows as well as penning cows in different groups to be able to meet those requirements. Making sure that our calves have access to feed and water sources. So thinking about throat height and feed bunk space for both our bunks and our water tanks so those young calves can get up and start eating soon. We want to make sure our feed bunks are deep enough to allow that high fiber based cow diet um, to be in that bunk without a lot of feed thrown out. Um, or we'll think maybe about fight feeding at multiple day, times per day to help reduce that cost. So less feed in the bunk at any one time. Again, with our limited grazers, we have better ability to group cows based on age, stage of production, and feed those cows to meet those requirements and the ability to change that ration on a frequent basis. And finally, making sure we have adequate bunk space for those cows, roughly that two and a half to three feet per head per, per cow, depending on stage of production. One of the things that was very evident for limited grazers is we want to look at having a creep pen for those calves um, from a very young age on. So give them the opportunity to have a space to get away from cows. Um, think about providing some individual pairing pens, especially for our first calf heifers. Um, because of the, the, the density of the cows, they need a chance to pair up with their calf. 
Bedding is critical, making sure we have adequate bedding as well as dry bedding to maintain the health, particularly of those newborn calves. With our limit grazing systems, we have the ability and it became very um, evident it was important to segregate newborn calves by age. So trying to keep the age spread within a group of calves to two weeks or less to produce, reduce the risk of disease spread. Um, because we have a higher quality, higher nutrient bedding pack, we want to be sure we're taking advantage of that from a nutrient standpoint on our cropping program. Um, we may consider weaning earlier to help reduce some of the nutrient demands on the cows and move those calves out to finish sooner. They will have been creep, feeding, creep fed by feeding next to the cows and uh, give us the ability to move them on and reduce the cows nutrient requirements and feed rations. And finally, we need to pay very close attention to the cows looking for health issues and particularly looking for feet and leg concerns that may become an issue in those limit graze systems. For our traditional systems, again, controlling feed costs is important. Here we're looking at how do we better utilize and manage our pastures to extend the grazing season we have. Um, we want to supplement to meet those cows' needs, but we don't want to be overfeeding, particularly as we look at winter feed um, needs and feed requirements. Again, controlling feed costs. Many times we're using a big bale system, um, or even if we are in a bunk system, we want to control feed waste. And just to give an idea of the, the producers in this operation, basically we we're looking at about two acres per cow for that six to eight month grazing period, depending on the forage productivity of the land. For our traditional systems, we also want to look at utilizing crop residue, cover crop grazing, or stockpiled um, grass grazing to try to reduce our feed cost. Um, we want to provide adequate space in our winter feeding areas and make sure that we're in a well-drained surface, particularly as we go into calving season to reduce some of our mud concerns and issues. Um, we want to try to move pregnant cows at calving time to um, kind of replicate the Sandhills calving system rather than moving pairs out, leave the calves where they're born, um, keep them in age groups of about two weeks, move pregnant cows to try to reduce limits of limit disease spread. Um, if we are feeding out on pastures, which a lot of our producers are doing, we want to strategically place those feeding areas where we need soil nutrients, particularly organic matter, as those cows will help increase the nutrient level in the soil where they're fed. Again, we want to think about matching our peak nutrient requirements to forage availability, since that's our lower cost feed input. We want to manage the environmental impact of those feeding areas, so not placing feeding areas down near streams or in low areas, but placing them up away from water sources. And then um, we want to consider managing our excess spring growth of grass by harvesting a cutting of hay off of parts of those pastures to keep that grass in a more productive state. For our extended grazing systems, again on the feed costs, they're looking at how do we extend or improve that grazing pasture management, grazing management to graze more days, produce more grass on the acres we have. For many of our extended grazers, we're looking at using some type of a stockpiled pasture for winter grazing. So how do we best do that or incorporate crop residue and cover crop grazing if that's an opportunity. Most of our extended grazers were using about three to four acres, mostly four acres per cow, depending on the length of, of their extended grazing season and the productivity of their pastures. Managing weather risk is important for all operations, but on this system, um, it, it's also important, particularly in the grazing season, um, both in summer grazing to make sure we have adequate growth through the summer months, the heat of the summer, but also to make sure um, monitoring that weather impact on grazing stockpile grass. Cows can manage to graze through, through snow, but not ice, so paying attention to that. Um, the the Sandhills calving system works much better for our extended grazers because we have more pasture acres to work with. So again, moving those pregnant cows and leaving those, those newborn calves in groups of about two weeks of age. Again, trying to match our calving season and our peak requirements to forage availability. Um, consider mowing or making some hay off of parts of our early spring growth again because we have more pasture available to us. And where we're stockpiling, we want to limit the stockpile growth to no more than about 100 days 
of growth so that it, it stays nice, lush, and green and doesn't get overly mature. Um, stockpile growth also can, can benefit from fertilizer and from also uh, consider rotating or strip grazing those stockpiles so we have less waste. Those are just the best management practices we pulled from this uh, cow-calf systems project. If you'd like to know more details on the full project or get a copy of the manual, you can do that through our ISU Extension Store, Product 15561. The download is uh, available free of charge. The first set of books, the first printing is covered through the grant from the Leopold Center. And beyond that, the, the books will be a charge item. But you can order that through the Extension Store. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. I'm in Northeast Iowa, or you can contact any of my five counterparts who are across the state, your Extension Beef Specialist, and we'd be glad to answer questions or visit with you more about the results of this project. Thank you.